It's Friday night. It's live improv from New York City, and we got a we we've uh, I've had fun so far. I don't know about you. I'm I'm having a blast, and uh, I want to introduce the cast again because they're amazing and they're hilarious and they're really super nice. We got Taylor, and we got Stephanie, and we got EJ, and we got Mike, and we got Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Scotty Watson. You know, we uh, we we like to get our our suggestions off the interweb, which I'm told is a whole bunch of tubes and wires and whatnot. And um, we we got a we got a pretty good one today. And it was it was it, it kind of came in under the wire. Normally, I stop taking suggestions at six thirty, but I made a suggestion for one of our improvisers that we have all played with on this very show before, Margaret Fogel. Margaret, hey, Margaret. Just, and you know what? It's nepotism. I don't care. Those of you who are like, oh, you took suggestions after 6.30. Well, guess what? Margaret's a friend of mine. And, yeah. Well, the other people who gave suggestions are also friends. <laughs> but uh, I, I really liked this suggestion. Uh, Mike asked for, uh, what is, uh, no, no, that's not what he asked. He yeah. asked for something that you would do outside. Where the hell is it? Uh, what's a scary or dangerous activity, uh, outdoor activity? What is a scary or dangerous outdoor activity that you might do? And our friend and actor, Margaret Fogel, gave us this suggestion. Ride the New York subway. <laughs> <laughs> those of us who ride the subway, those, those of you in other parts of the country and you think it's really, really dangerous. Well, those of us that ride the subway, the New York subway on a regular, regular basis, we can tell you the truth. It's fucking dangerous. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a lunatic asylum on rails. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's going to be our opening monologue. We're doing a thing called That Makes Me Think Of. It's like, um, uh, it's like a montage where we're all going to be, every scene that we're in, we're going to be playing different characters. But it, what holds it together is someone's going to start a monologue and they're going to do a monologue. And then uh, there'll be a scene following that that is inspired by the monologue. And then that monologue inspires a scene, i.e. that makes me think of, and so on and so on and so on, till we fully explore this suggestion. Our first monologue is going to uh, come to us from Taylor. Hello, Taylor. And that is your suggestion, the New York subway system. New York the rest, subway system. Right? The rest of us are going to mute our microphones, turn off our camera, and we're going to play it. That makes me think of. The New York subway system. I've only been on the New York subway twice in my life. And I mean, I hear the stories. People say the things. I watch the TikToks and the YouTubes and the Instagrams and the rest of that. I see all of the, you know, stuff that goes on. And I was phenomenally disappointed because not only did it not happen that way, nobody spat on me, nobody shoved me, people were polite and kind. I wasn't sure which stop to get off. They're like, oh no, you take the... I was told there was going to be some rude, disgusting, nasty, dangerous, be careful kind of behavior. Nothing. I cannot tell you, as a tourist, I was offended. I expected some sort of thing that never happened. And, and so I gave up taking the subway, honestly, and started walking everywhere in New York. Because if I'm not going to have that New York experience of, oh, look, there's this amazing violinist playing in the subway, didn't happen. Uh, or we're going to do a flash mob while in transit. Nope, that didn't happen either. Oh, you know what? Somebody's going to be all nasty and mean. Didn't happen. So I decided I would walk the streets of New York. So I did. I walked all over New York and it was delightful. I didn't get mugged, uh, but the air was much fresher than when I was on the subway. That was nice. So fresh air and the window shopping and the, you know, I get to see things. You don't see anything when you're, you're on a subway underground. That's not fun, really. I was disappointed in the subway. Can you hold the door? 
Oh, oh, a uh, absolutely. <laughs> Let me just, I know it's rude for everyone else uh, on the, on the, on the, on the train, but I'm going to, I'm going to jam this door open and hold it for you. Thank you. Because Thank I'm you. just going to. Oh, well, this is a, I'm sorry, hang on. This is a pretty standard thing that you don't really do this because it, it, it holds up the train. So for the convenience of one person, we're holding up literally 500 people. But I, I also, now, I, now I'm once I'm standing here now, and now uh -huh. I, I have a, a bag that, now, can you help me with my bag? Hang on, hang on. Uh, uh oh, this is bad. Oh. Okay, hang on. Oh. Ah, ah. Uh, hand me the bag. Uh, hand me the uh, uh, oh, okay, okay. Um, oh, thank you, dear. Yeah, give me, hang on. Uh, uh, now my arm is in the. This is the. Uh, oh, this uh, hurts. It hurts. Yeah, yeah. This this hurts. This hurts. This hurts a, a lot. I'll tell you. <laughs> but oh. hang on. You're okay, though, right? I, well, I, actually, I, I'm, I'm losing the feeling in my arm, which is... Oh, uh, the train's moving! Okay, just grab grab onto the bag and hold on the outside of the train. You'll be okay. Just just come really... Just grab the thing and... Just, God, 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 oh, human strength. Okay, get it. Grab it through your hand. Hand, 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 hand. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, my God. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> anyway, I'm glad. I'm glad we're on this work trip together, because you know, a New Yorker probably wouldn't do that for you. You know, a Canadian. Oh, why don't you? Uh, you, you could. You could. You could. You can sit beside me. There's a. Oh, Jesus! I'd hope you'd never ask. I mean, um, what the um, heck's going on in New York? Nobody. Nobody helped you. Well, I mean, really, even though we're even though we're Torontonians, you know, uh, we're the rude ones right now. They they all had to wait while while we did that thing that we did. So, in actuality, us the tourists are the rude ones, and 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 they're the, you know, George, that's my bag. I mean, my bag with my stuff. Martha, I understand that that's your bag with your stuff, but everyone's got bags with with stuff. And if they don't get the bag in, they just wait for another train. That's all I'm saying, no, Martha. No, that can't happen. You know we have to be at the meeting at a certain time, and I have my papers in there. Sure, that's your, that's a your whole presentation. That's a very important bag. You, that's one of the most important bags you ever had. You, I know you understand. These people don't get it. Their bags are not as important as my bag. And Martha, our meeting. Martha, we've got to let go of physical things. You know, even though it's a very important meeting, what if, I'm just tossing this out here, what if we just let go of the, hang on, watch this. Hang on, watch your bag. Right off the bridge. Martha, the meeting isn't about the presentation. It's not about the bag. It's about you. You're just going to go and be you. I'll be me. Right? That's more than enough. stupid presentation. You don't need a presentation. I got it all up here. Yeah. And, and you got it all up here, too. Yeah. <laughs> and as, 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 as long as, as, as we have our passports and our... Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm going to go rent a boat. Um, thank you, Scotty and Stephanie, for that, um, <laughs> for that scene. He, hilarious. Uh, best laid plans of travel. Um, it reminds me of, um, many episodes of uh, going on trips, uh, with my mother. May she rest in peace. Um, we would take vacations uh, in, in Arizona. I'm in Arizona here. We would go down to Mexico sometimes and pack a trailer <clears throat> or other parts, northern Arizona. We're going to leave at 9 a.m. 
well, there's breakfast to make and there's emptying out the spice cabinet because you never know what spice you're going to miss when you're at Holly Lake in the White Mountains in northern Arizona. Um, you might need that fur coat and my wig. Let me see. You know, I, I, I just might be, I might need that wig because it might be, I might meet somebody out in the middle of, of nowhere, in the National Park in the, in the you know, northeast Arizona. Um, I, medicines, God knows what, 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 what might happen. Um, so, of course, nine o'clock turned to 12 o'clock, turned to three, turned to, no, it was late. And we are, you know, as kids, we're losing it. It's like, let's go. So that was the takeaway on that. Is that, you know, mom, it's always it, it okay. It's okay for me. It's okay to let things go. You know, it is about, it's about the people. It's about the people. I let myself in, Benji. Never fear, mummy's here. <laughs> Mexico, I can't believe it. Oh, mom, is this going to be another one of those vacations? Don't be silly. I know you're heartbroken. I know she broke your heart, but there's still the plane tickets and I'm coming with you. Mexico, you and me. Mom, this was supposed to be my wedding weekend. I know. I know the boys all let you down. Grooms, men, what are you going to do? But your mother will never let you down. And I'm here and I've packed my bikini and we're going to have margaritas by the pool. Woohoo! Oh boy, Mom, I can't wait. Oh, don't worry about me. Oh, I won't cramp your style. People will not think I'm your girlfriend, even though I've got an incredible figure for my age. <laughs> I don't really want to hear that, Mom. Don't be silly. I mean, <sighs> look, Matilda and I were supposed to be married and... I know. And, and I... I... I'm not going to be married now, and I'm going to Mexico with my mother, and I'm... Are I'm you crying really about sorry. this? God. Just get back up. Next you'll be crying that we're sharing a room. Why? Well, yes, it saves money. You and Matilda were going to have the honeymoon suite. You're coming in with me. No one need know. So right. Mom, I can't share. I mean, come on. I mean... <sighs> It's Mexico. They're all free and easy down there. Mom, you push Matilda out of the way. Oh, me? You no. I think so, no. yeah. Let's just say my son deserves better. I know, Mom, but I... I worked hard at, you know, I worked hard at, at, at making this happen. And, and you know, that first time that I brought her over to see you, you, you kept commenting about her figure and how much better yours was. And it, it kind of embarrassed her, I think. And, oh, well, if she can't cope with that, then she can't cope with life. I think this wig is giving me Frida Kahlo vibes. Woo, very Mexican. Yeah, we'll take that. You can't go to Mexico. I'm going to go by myself. Don't be silly, dear. People will talk. Well, people will talk if we're in the same room together. You know, they, they call that something. You know, they, you know, there's a, there's a, it's called 
It's called unconditional love. It's called standing up oh for your son. I don't want to hear that. Well, unconditional love and sharing the room. And, you know, the next thing you're, you're going to want to use my towel in the, from my oh. shower or something. It would save on luggage weight if we just shared a towel. You know how they like to put a surcharge on everything. Wait, you, you actually pack towels? Oh, my. Yes. Got your high school swimming club now. Don't well, worry, dear. I'll well, make you, you forget bring, Matilda. You, you, you brought. Oh, you brought my Yogi Bear towel. Mummy loves you. All right, off we go. Ole! <laughs> Thank you, Barry and EJ. Well, that makes me think of so many things. Uh, first of all, Freudian complex a little bit, but let's not go there. Uh, makes me think of meddling parents when it comes to weddings. What is it with that? It's like you would think they're the ones getting married. I don't understand what's going on. I mean, I was heckled at my own wedding by somebody's mother yes seriously heckled but you know i hear people talking about oh my son my daughter's getting married the whole world stops they have to plan this i've taught parents dance lessons where they were going to steal the show and all i kept thinking was it's not your wedding it's not. I know I'm, oh, God forgive me, but it's very interesting. I know we want to live vicariously through our children, but no, let them enjoy. If they want to get married in sweatpants at the local bar with a hoedown, I say, go for it, child. I support you. It's a nice dance move. I like it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Well, this is the dance move. The Foxtrot Samba combination. It's, it's absolutely going to steal Brian's wedding away from everyone. You're <laughs> going to win at I'm the better parent. I'm impressed. <laughs> Why um, popcorn? Do you want popcorn? I I just I made so yeah, mm, right? Yeah. Mm. Bobby, mm, mm -hmm. you are a better parent. You, you are, you are, you outshine. Ah. You, you are no, no you are, you are an outshine in everybody else. I'm oh a oh, you know I I gotta tell you, Drew, that's so. True, it's true. You're absolutely correct. I mean, I was going to say, you know, something complimentary back, but I decided to just acknowledge truth. <laughs> but that's, I mean, it's inspiring to me because, you know, I've lived my life, you know, always like t being careful of everybody, not mm -hmm. when they steal the spotlight. Well, tonight, tonight, I'm with you as my co star. Okay, I, I'm with you, Drew, but. <laughs> <laughs> little, little, little heart to heart here. I think I'm going to let the kids have this night. <laughs> I know you practiced all the upstaging, the heckling, the dancing, the flashy outfit. I, I, I really admire it. And if we were going to like, you know, cousin, you know, Penelope's third wedding again, I would say you're on point. I, I just, I don't, I don't think. Okay, I, Bobby, I Bobby, think Bobby, I gotta show you this. When we do the final, the final dip, you know, when uh -huh. you're down, you Yeah, yeah, down. okay, yeah, dip, we'll re yeah, we'll. Out, a sky, a rocket, a rocket is gonna shoot up. This will go up. I, 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 
I think that's one too far. I mean, you do you. I just think the whole and and you know how logistically how are you lighting that? I I have questions, and I think that fireworks at your dance number with dancing with the bride is is going to be maybe a bit too much. I I just throwing it out there. I, because I think the sequin suit that is, you know, having the lights shown on it is enough. It's glorious. Bobby, that's my, that's my fear. That's my secret. But I'm not enough. I'm not enough, Bobby. You I've never. Enough. Enough. You are enough, Drew. You're amazing. You're amazing, and I love going to weddings with you because who else sits there and and eats candy loudly with me? You know, with the wrappers and smacks gum and goes, "Oh sure, white." Uh -huh. You know, like she's a virgin. You know, who else would do that with me? Oh my God, we have so much fun. <laughs> you know, weddings are the best. And I love ruining weddings with you. I just think it's rude for us to do this at our own children's wedding. I don't think Brian's going to forgive us if we do this. Uh, and we have grandchildren's that. weddings to think of. Oh, Bobby. Oh, 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 Bobby. That's why I love you. I love you, Drew. <laughs> oh. Thank you. That was Taylor and Mike. You know, I think it's a I think it's a question of perspective. Uh, a million years ago, when I was a stand-up comic, I was the one that they sent out to deal with the hecklers. You know, the people that uh, were trying to upstage the comics. Uh, a, a lot of people thought that they were helping. Uh, and, you know, when you're a stand-up comic, you've worked so hard on that five minutes to really hone it and craft it. And what you really, really needed uh, was a, a drunk frat boy to yell, Scotty Waddy! Scotty Waddy. That was really, really helping. But one of the things that I always did with hecklers was ask them to repeat what they had just said. I'd say, what was that? And I'll tell you why. Yeah, they were the idiots. And if they repeat what they just said, they, they look like an idiot. But there, there was this gem that would happen every once in a blue moon. An amazing person would yell something and it would be magic. And if you get them to replace, you say, what was that? And they'd always go, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Sorry. Then, you know, you're onto it. Then, you know, it's going to be something amazing, something that really helps. One time I was in a little town and I asked where something was and somebody went, and I said, what was that? And he was, oh, no, no, no. And I said, oh, it's okay. It's okay. He said, it's near Queen Subway Station. And I said, you guys have a subway? And the whole place went wild because it was a really little town. And they told me about this story. That was uh, an April Fool's story, a gag where they said that they were building a subway in this little town, a one block subway. And it spiraled out of control because nobody knew that it was April Fool's. And people started shouting and they had to they had to hold a special town meeting to say, no, it was just an April Fool's joke. And the whole crowd got up one at a time and told me this amazing story about what had happened in their in their little newspaper and how the whole town had to come together to fix this problem. And at the end, I looked at my watch and my set was over. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the best set of comedy I ever did. Uh, ever did, bar none. Uh, let's get uh, let's get Stephanie Barry. Hey. You're going to be perfect. Oh, we come out here and we play for these subway riders. And we make more money than them. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm telling you right now. The way you strum that air guitar, they're going to be crowds. There'll be throngs of people. Throngs of people.
But I, I, Carla, I got to tell you something. Yes, Samuel. The last time we were here, we, uh, we set out the, the, you know, the, the hat to, to collect our, you know, our... Chilling. Our tips. Sure. Uh, for sure, for sure, chilling, chilling. Yeah. Well, there was nothing in the hat, Carla. Oh. Yo, Samuel, don't be so materialistic. It's the art of the air guitar. Somebody's got to think about how we going to make a, the rent. Ah, oh, the rent. I you mean, it's not talking. just all about, it's just not all about the art. Sometimes with Carla, we got to think about how we're going to support our, our 12 children back there in the apartment. Oh, those 12 things are our children. Good point. Good point, Sam. Yeah, yeah, Carla. Oh, so I'm going to put my air guitar down down and brainstorm with you. What if they come out and we do a whole air guitar orchestra? Oh, guitar. now you're talking, Carla. You know, we, we, we could give the kids, we could give the kids not just air guitars, but air piccolos, air cellos. Just, it's amazing. You have, you're, you're brilliant, Carla. And we will step up our class. We will be a classy orchestra. We could be a symphony orchestra. Uh, air symphony. Air symphony. I bet no one's ever done that before. Not in the subway, no. Not in the subway. It would be unique. I think we could make lots of, uh, lots of the, the jingles in the hat, huh? Yes. Yes. And they would... And they would learn work ethics. Yeah. Yes. That's a way to teach those 12 kids. Yes. And then when they get married, we could play for them in the subway. We would have an air wedding. In the subway. Right here. You know, from Hackensack into Manhattan. Oh. Oh, on the three train. And we could get that clown we saw earlier to be some entertainment and joke. An air clown, Carla. An air clown! No! Wait, <laughs> I'm so okay. excited, Samuel. I, I just don't remember where we left the kids. Oh. oh. I think I'm going to go check the apartment. The apartment. I'm going to call CPS. Thank you, um, Barry and Stephanie. That was a great scene. That actually made me think of the Link Catholic Youth Club, SW19, South London, the 1970s. There we all are. Catholic girls and Catholic boys at the Friday Night Youth Club called Link, linking youth together, run by the Jesuit priests with some help from the Fra Franciscan brothers down the road. It was a lovely youth club, activities, we did a bit of drama, but the highlight of every week was the hole in the wall, which was actually a glorified cupboard the kind of cupboard you'd open up, a closet where you'd store chairs, a closet big enough for about 20 people to squeeze into. We had a record player in the corner. You could go in there and it was dark and you could dance freely, unlike the Catholic cell, really allowed. Highlight of every Friday night, the ultimate at the end of the night, they always played Stairway to Heaven. And if you were lucky, during that Friday night, a boy would come up to you and say nonchalantly, Hey, uh, do you want to dance to Stairway to Heaven with me later on? And you'd go, yes, desperate. Because it meant this, where you put your arms around someone's neck and kept your pelvis as far away as you could. But there's a guitar break in Stairway to Heaven. 
and no matter how romantic it felt, when the guitar break came, the boys would leap off us as if we were electrified and go into guitar, air guitar solos in their minds. And there is nothing more unattractive than a dweeby little nerd rocking out, pretending he's Robert Plant with not just air guitar, but air long hair. Terrible. Adios, Dominus, Domini, Umbretum. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank so, you. Sister uh, Donna Maria uh, Spaghetti. Yes. Father. Bless the meeting, and now we can plan the youth dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, you're, you're, uh, you, you don't have to be like that around. Uh, you're a mother superior. We're, we're actually right, equal. You want to know something? They're in uh, the back. They're in the back every freaking time. They got the stairway, stairway to heaven. Have you heard that fornication horrible I've, song? I've, I've heard this. I've heard this. The song. It's a very. It's a very. Uh, uh, sister, sister Donna Maria okay. Spaghetti. I always thought it was a good song. I mean, it's, 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 it's what the kids enjoy. You know, I, I don't see the fornication in it. Have, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's to heaven. They mention heaven in the She's song. Buying though, are we really about the Benjamins? I have concerns. I have concerns. I'm because I'm, if we're about buying our way into heaven, that means they can do whatever they want, ever they want, and simply, you know, slip a few dollars in our direction. Are we about that, Father? Well, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the church has never been known to turn down donations. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, uh, but I have to say, Sister Mother uh, uh, Donna Mary Spaghetti. Maria yep. Spaghetti, Mary, Mary Spaghetti, mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 just, I, I, just, I just have to say that um, um, the church is modernizing. This is the 70s, man. It's not like, it's not like the old days. We, we, got, we, got a, we got a hip new pope and... We kind of embrace the rock and roll, Mother Mary. Comfort me with this, because I just it's, it's it's the rock and roll, and the kids like yeah, it. There's there's a whole bunch of of music that appears to be modern, yeah. and 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 you know, I I don't believe that it's actually the right message for the youth that we're you know trying to well teach appropriate linking in these dances i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure that i that i i'm i'm following you in that the, the music today seems completely uh uh, uh there's, 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 innocent you know, it's the, fun the whole, it's, you know the the mother mary does not comfort many people in that th song that's true you I'm, have offended. I'm offended you I'm have offended. not been very comforting yeah. though to be <laughs> fair mother mary donna sister maria and anna spaghetti yeah. anaphylactic uh -huh. you, yeah you haven't been comforting you I, I see you strike the children and that's going to go away. I hope it's pretty soon. I, I'm, I am trying to get the sin out of these poor little ones who are sinning all the time. They are smoking cigarettes and. But you and I, I both I smoke. Smell. You and I both smoke. And, and I have toked. Uh, I will, there's nothing take it in the Bible that said marijuana is not in the Bible. And so what i'm i'm losing my way father i'm losing my way you you're right i well, i have struck the children and yeah. and i i did i did smack knuckles with my ruler and and i don't i don't oh hell man i need some of that please Just try it just try thank it you. thank you right <laughs> That's some good stuff, man. Right? <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's good weed. That's really, yeah. Thank you. So we'll have the dance. And we'll leave them alone in the room. What the hell? Yeah, Fuck it. I like it. Thank you. Um, uh... <laughs> well, Sc Scotty and Taylor, that was really something else, you know. <clears throat> all this 
rock and roll and drug sex and rock and roll. <laughs> you know what? That makes me think of back in the 70s. Well, it was New Year's Eve and I went with a bunch of my friends and my then girlfriend, Lisa, uh, to see this movie called 200 Motels by Frank Zappa. And yes, we imbibed a bit before the, it was New Year's Eve, you know, uh, some of that weed that just got passed around and maybe even some of these barrels that, and in, I was sitting there and not quite understanding what this movie was all 200 motels. I suggest you look it up. It's, it's on the uh, interweb and, and uh, watch it because it all of a sudden I understood what 200 motels meant by Frank Zappa. And, and at the exact same moment, that light bulb went off on Lisa's up above Lisa's head too. And we started to laugh hysterically. And we were laughing so loud and so crazily because we had imbibed a little bit that the uh, manager of the theater came in and had to remove us from the 200 Motels movie. <laughs> Stop. Lisa. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. You're going to start me off again. I just got it together. <clears throat> Hotel number 275. We have here a double bed. A door and a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> With the sink. <laughs> Woohoo! Hello, Glasgow. Good to be here. Woo <laughs> oh, God. I love being on tour with you, buddy. <sighs> Lisa. Lisa, this is the best. <laughs> dweeby dweeby moon unit basil bush i love you love you you know it's what i love is that it doesn't matter we play whatever we want we make whatever we want that's right it's we can't go wrong because we're good. Because we're really, really good. We're stars. We're superstars. I'm playing the ice bucket tonight. Tonight, I rap on the ice bucket. What you got? <laughs> Dig it. I love it. I'm, I'm going to bring on a hanger. There's something about a wood hanger. You? Yeah. Oh, I love it. And you can pair it up with the hairdryer. There's one in the bathroom. Yes. Nice. All right. We're going to throw in a riff, Stairway to Heaven. And then I'm going to look at you and start laughing uncontrollably because I know you're going to be brilliant like you always are. Yeah. Yeah. But this is it. This is the last motel. This is it. End of the road after this, old buddy. I gotta start writing again. Yeah. 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 No. No, no, you. Yes. You could write a symphony for all the instruments we've created on the motel tour. We need to throw in. Oh, God. Go on. An air guitar. Listen to me. I'm going to say it again. An air guitar.
guitar. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. The airbed was amazing. The air guitar will be louder. <laughs> yes. Oh, symphony concerto for air guitar. We'll play the Albert Hall in London. Oh, we'll have the Queen, the Prime Minister. Yeah. And, oh, we'll invite all the Tories. I can play the staple gun. <laughs> oh, I've always wanted to. Yes, yes. Do we be... Do we be moon unit staple bump? There you go, Margaret. We started out with the New York subway and we found out what probably, if they had done it, would have kept the Beatles together. Why they didn't ask us. Come on back, everybody. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah, there we go. That's what we think of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to thank uh, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Margaret Fogel. Thank you, Margaret, for your suggestion. I want to thank an amazing, talented, and very fun cast. I had a lot of fun today. Thank you, Taylor. Stay. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Mike, and thank you, EJ. And more than anything, thank you for watching not just improv but long form improv on the internet. That's kind of cool. And thanks for joining us on this. Hey, I'm your host Scotty Watson, and uh, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Scotty Watson. Yes. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>